In this video, we're going to look at how we can solve pedigrees. Now remember, a pedigree is a basically a picture of a family tree. And when you look at pedigrees, anytime you see a square, a square is a male. And anytime you see a circle, a circle is a female. And remember, when you have a line between them, that represents a marriage or a mating. And when you have a line coming down, that lets you know that there is a child. Now, what we're gonna look at first is what's called an autosomal recessive pedigree. These are the most common types of pedigrees that we have. Autosomal, again, lets you know that it's not sex linked. So it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. And again, most pedigrees, we're looking for rare or recessive traits. So when you look at this pedigree, you notice that most of the individuals in this pedigree are left blank. Remember, if you're left blank, that lets you know that you do not have the trait that we're looking for. If you're colored in, you do have the trait that we're looking for. So let's just say for the sake of being easy, we're looking at hair color. We're looking at brown hair color versus blonde hair color. Well, in nature, brown hair is dominant and blonde hair is recessive. So all of these individuals that are left blank have brown hair. The individuals that are colored in have blonde hair. So if we look at the genotypes, the ones that have blonde hair are little b, little b. Now, when you look at a pedigree, you have to go and finish the pedigree because all you know about the ones that are blank is that they have brown hair. But remember that can be big b, big b, or that can be big B, little b. So we gotta figure out what's what. So the easiest way to do this is to work backwards. So we're gonna start down here with this male. He's little b, little b. Well, remember you get half your gene from your mom and you get half your gene from your dad. So therefore, He had to get a little b from his dad, and he had to get a little b from his mom. So most pedigrees will not show carriers. If you have a symbol that's half shaded, that person is a carrier. So they are big b, little b in our example. Now this makes sense because notice the mom here, the grandmother here is little b, little b. So she had to give her little b to her daughter. Likewise, she had to give a little b to her son. She had to give a little b to this daughter. And she had to give a little b to this son. So when you see pedigrees, you need to go in and fill out the carriers before you can answer the questions. Because most of the time with a pedigree, you're going to have a series of questions to answer. So it might say, Remember when we look at pedigrees, they'll have Roman numerals to represent the generations. And then a lot of times the individuals will be numbered as well. So like I might say is Roman numeral number two, individual number five, what can you tell me about their possible genotype? Well, if you left it blank, you would tell me, oh, they're big, 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 big. Nope, based on this mom here, we know they have to be big B, little b. So let's look at another example. So don't freak out when you see all this. This is also an autosomal recessive trait. And this could also be an example of a sex link trait, but we're not gonna go over that. But with an autosomal recessive, you'll notice that most of the symbols here are left blank, which lets us know this is probably a recessive trait. Now, for some reason, this example, only the males seem to have this trait. We're going to work backwards again. So notice, we're going to assume we could do hair color again, blonde versus brown. So we know that all the ones that are colored in are little b, little b. Well, this male, number six, had to get a little b from his dad. He also had to get a little b from his mom. So we know his mom is a carrier. 
We also know his siblings have to be carriers because they all had to get a little bee from their dad. We could go over here. Likewise, this one is little bee, little bee. So he had to get a little bee from his dad and he had to get a little bee from his mom. Now it's totally okay to leave his siblings blank. When in doubt, leave alone because they could have gotten the big B from their mom and they could have gotten the big B from their dad. Is it possible that they're carriers? Yes. But when in doubt, if they're not part of our story, leave them alone. Now in this case, this mom is a carrier. So we know that she got a little B from her dad. Is it possible she got it from her mom? Maybe, but we're not sure yet. So we're gonna go up the path of least resistance. So her dad is little b, little b. Her uncle is little b, little b. So we know that this one has to be a little b and this one has to be a little b. It's okay to leave this one blank and it's okay to leave this one blank. They could be carriers, but we don't know that. When in doubt, we just know they have brown hair. So when in doubt, leave them alone. Well, if this girl here, if this girl here is a little b, then we know she had to get a little b from at least one of her parents. Well, notice her brother is little b, little b, which means both of her parents have to have a little b. And again, it's okay to leave her two sisters alone. We got to work our way back up. So we know we're going to look at this number eight here again. He is little b, little b. So he had to get a little b from his dad. And he had to get a little b from his mom. Now, we know nothing about this gentleman here. We know nothing about his parents. We're gonna work our way back up this way. Okay. Now this girl is little b, little b. We know that her grandparents up here are both carriers. We know nothing about her dad, so we're gonna ignore her dad. So we're gonna assume she got this little b from her mom, because then we're gonna assume that the mom got the little b from the parents. So when you're doing these types of pundit square, these types of pedigrees, you have to work yourself backwards. It's not finished yet. So yes, I know this looks pretty confusing, but when you're doing a pedigree, you're not gonna fill in with all these arrows and all these circles. The main thing is just to remember to work yourself backwards. So in the cleaned up version, it's gonna look like this. So when you see a pundit square, remember they're just gonna show you the ones that are affected. And remember, affected means it has whatever gene we're looking at. So just in my example, we're looking at brown hair versus blonde hair. So everybody who was blank to start with has brown hair. Everyone that's now half and half still has brown hair. They're just showing you now that they're carriers. Well, the ones that are colored in started out with blonde hair. Remember, when in doubt, leave it alone. What we're going to look at now is hemophilia. Hemophilia is a sex linked trait. And remember, in this case, it is found on the X chromosome only. So remember, in the case of sex linked X traits, the males get it from their moms, and males cannot be carriers. So when we're looking at this, we see three men who have hemophilia because they're colored in. All the others do not have hemophilia because they're left blank. But we still need to figure out where did these gentlemen get these traits from? So we're going to work backwards. Remember, for a male who has hemophilia, he is XY little h. So the X came from his mom and the Y came from his dad. So therefore the mother 
has to be carrying the hemophilia gene on one of her ax on one of her axes. Remember, in sex-linked traits, men cannot be carriers; only ladies. So, likewise, this mom has to be a carrier because her son has it. Now, is it possible that these daughters are carriers? Yes. But remember, when in doubt, just leave them alone. So now we got to work our way up. We see here, this gentleman has it. So we know he got it from his mom. So it's possible that this female got it from there. Well, now we got to figure out where did this female get it from? Remember, we know nothing about her dad, so we're going to leave him alone. We're going to ignore him. So we're going to assume, because remember, guys cannot be carriers, so he is just big X, or he's just big H. So therefore, we know we got it from the mom, which makes sense, because she got it from her mom as well. So with sex-linked traits, only women can be carriers. In our pedigrees. Now the third and final kind is an example of Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is a brain disorder that is dominant. And remember most genetic disorders that are left in nature are recessive. Nature's gotten rid of most dominant disorders, okay? natural selection. But Huntington's disease is a dominant trait that's been able to still survive in nature because most people who have Huntington's disease, for some reason, the gene does not turn on until late in life. So most people who have Huntington's disease don't start developing the symptoms until their 40s, 50s, or even 60s. Well, by then, they've already had kids. So nowadays, we know what Huntington's disease is, and you'll know whether or not you have Huntington's disease in your family. But remember, up until recently, people didn't know what these were. So people did not know that they had this disorder or that they could be carrying this disorder. So by the time you're 40, 50, or 60, you've already had a family. So you've already passed this trait down. That's why this dominant disorder has been able to survive in nature. But we do know what Huntington's disease is. We do know what gene causes it, and we do have genetic tests for it. And nowadays, like I said, you would know if you had Huntington's disease in your family. And so therefore, a lot of people who have Huntington's disease in their family have the choice to be tested to see whether or not they have the gene. Because unfortunately, in the case of autosomal dominant, if you're a carrier, you still have it. So a lot of people who have Huntington's disease in their family and know that they have a very high risk of having it themselves will choose not to have children because if they have a high risk, their children are gonna have a high risk. And Huntington's disease, disease is a neurological disorder. It basically causes parts of the brain to biodegenerate. And so you slowly lose control of muscles and it does cause death. So this pedigree looks different from other pedigrees that we've seen before, because now it's dominant. So this person here, number five, they're shaded in, so we know they have Huntington's disease. They could be big B, big B, or they could be big B, little B. All we know is that they have Huntington's disease. Okay. Remember, with Huntington's disease, if you're a carrier, you still have it. So you're still going to be shaded in. Remember, being shaded in does not mean you're little B, little B. It simply means that you have whatever trait this pedigree is looking for. So looking at this, we see that number seven here does not have this disorder. So we know that number seven is little b, little b. So therefore, we know that the parents here are big b, little b. They have Huntington's disease. It's a dominant trait but they were able to pass the two recessive genes down to their child. Likewise, we know that this female is little b, little b. 
So therefore her father had to be big B, little b in order for her to get that thing. Now there's nothing for us to finish filling in because if somebody is a carrier of a dominant trait, they're still gonna be shaded totally in. So with autosomal dominant traits, there'll be nothing for you to shade in. You just might have to, like we did here, figure out what the shaded in individuals are. Now for these down here, we don't know. They could have gotten the two big B's from their parents. They could have gotten a big B, little b from their parent. So we're not really sure. So on the case of autosomal dominance, you're not gonna be shading things in. Everything's gonna be shaded in for you. You just have to figure out the genotype of those individuals.